If you don't have $25 to spend on a computer case such as this, and you're really on a budget, can you use the box that the motherboard came in as a computer case? No, because the power supply is too big, but we're just gonna build a computer. I know what you're thinking. You call that a complete computer? Well, no, actually, it is not a complete computer because I have not yet put on the sticker that came with the processor. Now it's complete. First impressions, I will say, it is incredibly quiet. There are three desktop computers in this room assuming you call that a desktop computer. And the noise isn't too bad. If you aren't the sort of person who wants to open their computer up and start it with a screwdriver, for 10 bucks, which is probably what you could pick up a case on Craigslist for, you can get something like I have in this video for my Rubik's Cube computer. It's basically buttons on a six foot cable that turn your computer on and off, come with additional USB ports and a headphone jack. It could even be enough I.O. that you could completely tuck this away or rather duct tape it to the back of your screen and then all you need is a little wheel down here. As it currently stands, we of course have our HDMI port, our audio jacks, Ethernet, or we can just use this wireless. We also have our wireless mouse and keyboard combo, which leaves us two USB 3 ports, one for a flash drive and one for an Xbox controller. We have our intake fan here, which goes through the CPU heatsink. Now all that air does need to come out, so we went ahead and put in another fan here, held in by three screws, because I didn't line up the fourth hole correctly. 
Our power supply obviously wouldn't fit in a box this small, so we just have all the cables running in there, even though only three of them are actually plugged into anything. One thing I would do if I was doing this over again is probably tape this closed once I had that power button dongle added. And then the other thing I would do is I would actually put in some motherboard screws, or just any nut and bolt combo, poke the screws through the bottom of the box and then with a nut tighten them so that when I plug stuff in the motherboard doesn't shift. But as it currently stands, the hard drive is just wide enough, it's a laptop two and a half inch drive, that when I plug something in it doesn't go because the hard drive is sandwiched between the back edge of the box and the edge of the motherboard. Not the best solution, but it works. But, how does it behave thermally if we give it some games? First, there's no way integrated graphics are going to run at 4K, so we're going to take this down to 1080p. To monitor temperatures, I have core temp 1.10.2, which will give us an idea of what the CPU is reading, although I can already tell you those numbers are garbage because it is not 14 degrees Celsius in this room. Okay, so while temperatures may not be something we can accurately monitor with software, something we can monitor is if there is any thermal throttling. Of course, the thermals wouldn't be so bad that you're trying to measure if they're throttling or not, but that's what we can do with the cheap tools that we have. After our 30 minute burn test, it would appear that nothing is burning. It would also appear that we have not thermal throttled one bit. So, kudos for this out-of-the-box performance being out-of-the-box performance. Now, to answer the question, would you actually want to do this? No. Not at all. It looks so terrible. Thanks for watching this video. If you need to get your fix of Super Ghetto Fixes, make sure to be subscribed to this channel and give this video a like. While you're at it, check out some of our previous videos, and we will see you in the next one.